In this video, I will be covering two tools instead of one. Uh, I will be covering the Rectify Name tool and also the Marker ID tool. The reason why I am covering two tools in one video is because the Marker ID tool actually works in tandem with the Rectify Name tool. But more on that later. So, starting with the Marker ID tool, the Marker ID tool is essentially what the cubic join and the virtual join is but the only difference is is that marker ID uses or relies on a thing called locators so locators are these plus sign things that you see scattered across your um, your seam and they are basically the foundation of your character so the markers if you look um, under them, or if I were to delete one of them, or the entire um, motion of one of them, what's left is actually a locator. So think of locators as like, um, like the blueprint or foundation of your your character. So like you, before you do anything, you go off, or like the most accurate thing in the scene is the locators. Okay, so that's the concept of um, of locators. So moving on to actually using the marker ID. So you might be um, you might notice that I'm also using another file for this video. Uh, the reason for that is because there's actually a problem, a specific problem, in one of these markers. Uh, I think the lower back that perfectly illustrates how what the capabilities of the marker ID tool and the rectify our name tool are. So, um, I, yeah, the, I believe this is the problem. Uh, let me just quickly double check. Yes, okay. So, uh, you might be thinking, um, wouldn't this problem be easily fixed by the virtual join? Because since it's a large app, isn't like the virtual join the most optimal to use because it handles perfectly with um, large gaps. Uh, you're not wrong in that respect, but the reason why I'm using marker ID tool instead of virtual join is because there's a locator. Um, what I mean, what I mean by this is that, as you can see from the beginning of the problem for this particular marker. Um, once it disappears, it actually leaves behind the marker. The marker? Sorry, the locator. So it leaves behind the locator. Um, in previous videos, I showed you problems where there, when the marker disappears, there's just nothing at all. There's no locator. But in this situation, the locator is actually still there. And since the locator is a, like a very accurate representation of where the marker should be, and like it's the foundation of our character, um, why not follow the locator since it's more accurate? So yeah, so that's the reason why I'm using the marker ID tool in this situation. So to use the marker ID tool, first you need to do um, the thing you do uh, before you uh, use any tool, is you highlight the problem area. So once you do that, Go ahead and click on cubic join. Sorry, <laughs> cubic join. That's another video. Click on marker ID. So once you click marker ID, this window will pop up. So this window shows which um, marker you're working on right now. Um, you don't need to worry about these um, options here. Um, they don't really matter. I don't even use them. So um, this shows what marker you're uh, using right now. So once you know like this is the graph or this is the marker you want to uh, use, I mean it's pretty self-explanatory because you're on the marker's graph anyway, so why, why aren't you using the lower back? It just makes no sense. So um, once you know that, go ahead and click on the locator of where you think the marker should be. So once you click it, you can see that it actually becomes very... Twitchy, and it just jumps to 
all, a lot of locators, or the locators that are like spread around uh, in the scene. Right? One of them goes down here for some reason. So obviously this is not what you want. Um, and the reason for that is that even though you tell the locate or the marker to just like latch on to the specific one, um, Cortex will in interpret that as, oh, okay, you just want it to be on every single lo locator. So how do we how do we tell Cortex we want this specific um, locator? And to do this, this is where um, the second tool comes in. This is where rectify a name comes in. So this tool, rectify a name, essentially forces Cortex to learn for this portion of the graph or what you highlighted that this locator is belonging to the lower back. So once you highlight it, highlight the bomb area or the area where like this goes all whack, um, and then you go and click rectify, this should essentially fix the problem. So now that you when you return to marker ID, you can tell when a marker ID is active when this window pops up. So once you go back to it and you click on it, it should fix itself. And that in a very, very rough explanation, that's what rectify a name does. Um, the full explanation of rectify a name is that it essentially um, rectifies all the markers or all the locators you see on the screen including the ones that has markers on them, to the starting position. So the starting position is this one. So rec when you, once you um, click Rectify Name, uh, for this portion of the uh, capture, for this marker, it's going to take information from the starting position and see what locator is occupying that um, locator. And in this case, it's the lower back. So that's why it didn't go off to other locators. And, and it's fixed. So in lame turns, that's essentially uh, how you, what um, rectify name does. Uh, I could probably explain it in some more detail, but for the uses uh, for you guys when cleaning up, um, this explanation will suffice. So yeah, that's how you use rectify a name and marker ID.